The crypto sector has turned red following the sell-off of tech names. We saw the US economy's advanced GDP quarter on quarter improving. Yesterday, we spoke about the Stanfield levels on Apple. These are smart money institutional buy and sell levels. Because we had such a gap in the market, it was likely that Apple sold down and it has done so. We can also see that the S&P 500 is under a key selling level. We're starting to see US government two-year yields come down. We've also seen the DXY, the US dollar currency index, sell down. It's likely to make a route for 111.031 because that's a magnetized level. We also saw yesterday the Nasdaq sell down dramatically because it didn't have a lot of support in this area. It's actually selling down. The next level we would anticipate is the 10.729 level. Is this sell off just starting? Let's run the numbers and find out. Bitcoin is currently down 1.89% to 2371. Ethereum is down 2.18% to 1523. I always say crypto is volatile, but the truth is the stock market is pretty volatile as well. We can see just in the last trading session, Meta, the old Facebook, came down 24.56%. What we need to bear in mind, these are the growth engine of the US economy. And we saw communication services and information technology, the hardest hit sectors in the last trading session. Stock markets globally were mixed. Yellen says US GDP data shows strength, but also a healthy slowdown. As domestic demand was the weakest in two years because of the Fed's aggressive interest rate hikes. Looking at all seasonal patterns since 1946 for SMP midterm election years, we often see a retracement towards the start of November and then November gets really hot into December. Are we going to see this this year? According to analysts, recession fears threaten perfect track record of post midterm US stock market gains. And keep in mind the midterms are on November the 8th. Over the past 70 years, the S&P 500 has risen in every 12 month period following the US midterm elections. Recession fears are on the radar. Amazon predicts profit slump during holidays, crushing shares. Apple slips after iPhone and services revenue comes in light. Share slip after investors fail to get a blowout quarter. Intel pledges more cost cuts as sales forecast misses estimates. Meta's $676 billion route boots it out of the world's top 20 stocks. In European markets, Credit Suisse posts Q3 loss of 4 billion Swiss francs. And the ECB, the European Central Bank, hiked rates by 75 basis points. We live in a globally connected environment. Southeast Asia digital economy slows as people curb spending. And this covers Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam and the Philippines. We can also track the real estate sector to understand impacts of recessionary behavior. New York area offices are 47% full, similar to previous weeks. Amazon stock sinks 11% on weak fourth quarter guidance. Things are also heating up with Ukraine and Russia. Russia has been claiming for some time that Ukraine has finished the creation of a dirty bomb. India's defense minister warns against nuclear weapons in a call with Russian counterpart. Russia notifies the US it will carry out expected nuclear drills. And Russian state media amplify the Kremlin's dirty bomb allegations about Ukraine. The history of warfare is typically one of obtaining resources. And the Kremlin says it may transfer assets in annexed Ukrainian regions to Russian companies. Ukraine is a major contributor to grain and Putin to use UN grain deal as leverage at G20. And the International Energy Agency says that Moscow's influence will global fossil fuel demand is to reach a plateau by this decade. And Russia's share of the world gas market is expected to slump 50% by 2030. And what about the rest of the world? Two thirds of British citizens to curb Christmas spending on cost of living crisis. And UK Prime Minister calms markets for now.
And he still faces an economy headed towards recession and plagued by high inflation. Xi Jinping says that China can work with the US before the possible Biden meeting. Yet, China's Xi Jinping is set to give wolf warrior diplomacy more bite. Wolf warrior diplomacy is not diplomacy at all. It's an adversarial approach to dealing with all other countries. Morgan Stanley slashes China stock outlook after the party Congress. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says China wants to speed up its seizure of Taiwan. And China has rejected the status quo Taiwan situation. And Xi Jinping's new generals offer cohesion over possible Taiwan plans. Meanwhile, in North Korea, Kim Jong-un has examined the test fire plan which mapped out locations of US military bases in South Korea. He is calling for a wiping out of US forces in South Korea and national reunification. Isn't it interesting? National reunification, Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, North Korea and South Korea. And the key is this hasn't actually happened. It's a rocket firing drill. And this is straight from the global China Times, which is a state run media. As crypto technical analysts, we must look at the facts and run the numbers. We can see from fleet traffic there is a lot of fleet traffic currently around the waters of these national reunification projects. If war breaks out, this will not be the case. We would see traffic, marine traffic in the Taiwan Straits absolutely clear out and marine traffic around South Korea clean out as well. But it's not just sea traffic. We would expect the air traffic to actually clear out as well. These are things that we can look at to substantiate the merit, the signal versus the noise inside all of these news headlines. For example, the flights over Ukraine, you can see they're just not there. And you can see marine traffic through Europe is quite dense. But when you come to the Black Sea, you can see it's very sparse and located away from the conflict zone. A lot of people think that C-19 is over. It is not. There are still outbreaks all across the world. And China is enforcing zero COVID as outbreaks widen. Zero COVID is all about sealing up buildings and locking down districts. 28 cities are currently in varying degrees of lockdowns with affecting and impacting about 208 million people. It's little wonder that hiring a Chinese small firms fails to pick up from a record low. And Beijing shuts down Universal Resort. Wuhan locks down the district in order to reduce C-19 infections. And just something interesting, it's 70% owned, state owned by Beijing Cultural Tourism Investment and 30% owned by Comcast. And you can see how it impacts tech companies. Apple supplier grapples with C19 flare up in iPhone city. And it's not just costing China, it's costing the whole world. Fear of catching C19 has cost US economy $250 billion this year. And it's kept 3 million people out of the workforce. In crypto technical analysis, we first mark up our charts with the CTKS method and these particular boxes represent what is covered in the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. But we must look beyond the charts towards global events, checking world events, collecting probabilities and checking the stock markets. We need to know what is going on in the world in general because it impacts crypto. Many people say that the stock market and crypto market have decoupled. Well, we can see that's pretty much not the case. As the S&P 500 comes down and the Nasdaq comes down, it's dragging the entire crypto market with it. Current crypto market cap is 939.8 billion. We have a support level, a smart money level, a Stanfield level at 924.54 billion and greater support at 908.617 billion and 905.229 billion. If we actually see prices fall to these levels and maintain this upward momentum line, this support line, that's actually not a bad thing. We have a support line below as well, but we have inside the crypto market global market cap 
at 866.674 billion. That has been quite strong. As we move closer to the weekend and light trading inside the weekends can move price around quite a lot. Basically, this very firm level of support where we could get a wick down inside the market and a rejection from that level, it's about 7.78% away. But we have to always look in three dimensions. And that's why our daily three dimensional risk management technique is the Borsog code. And I go through this in depth in episode 685. First, we think in terms of three dimensions. What if the market goes down? What percentage would you ascribe to that? It could go neutral or flatline. What percentage would that be? And it could go up. What percentage could that be? We don't necessarily just buy the news headlines. There's a lot of negativity inside the market, but that doesn't mean that the stock markets will continue to fall. The purpose of the Borsog code is to get you ready for any eventuality. Markets do not reward certainty. Actually, they penalize it. That's rule 114. So we've now got a fairly good idea of what is happening in the world and you need this level of understanding to do really, really well inside all financial markets. The first thing that masterclass students do is they mark up their charts with the CTKS method. And that's a method of technical analysis that I invented. It's very, very powerful. And the Stanfield levels, these SL levels, are smart money buy and sell levels. What we actually saw in the S&P 500 was a rallying through very, very strong sell levels, institutional sell levels. What we got recently is exhaustion. We could come back to, for example, the 3781 and 3768 levels and find support here. If we do so, that's a fantastic cradle and we would expect prices to resume up. Don't be swayed by the news headlines. You must know them, but don't, don't be swayed by them. You just have to just register them. The key is to pay attention to what the chart is telling you. And if we look under that 3768 level, there's really nothing here. But we've got two very strong support levels at 3709 and 3688. It's quite possible that we could get a wick down if we go on that negative momentum and wick down to here and get pushed above. So uh, around the 3807, if that is the case, that's fantastic. But don't forget, we could actually come down or go flat as well. We've got three dimensional thinking or we could go up from here. What is the most likely? The most likely probability is that we head down from here and we were heading down yesterday and we saw this big rejection of future prices because prices have just come up too far too fast. They've exhausted themselves. Basically, they just need to consolidate a little bit. A lot of people in the crypto space, they say, oh, Ken, I don't care what the S&P 500 does. It's just irrelevant. It doesn't influence the crypto market's price at all. Hang on a sec. That's Bitcoin. It really does influence. Yes, it does. It influences so much that rule 225 says Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. And if we look at the Stanfield levels on Apple, we can see that Apple and Bitcoin move in directional correlation with each other. This is really important to know. If you're seeing a sell off in Apple or the major tech names, you would expect the technology of cryptocurrency to also sell down. One thing that we're definitely seeing, the markets are misbehaving. When we see the dollar sell off but recover a little, we expect certain things to play out in the economic system. And when they don't cross triangulate, that means deeper issues are afoot. For example, when we look at junk bonds, this is the risk on appetite inside the market. We can see they've come up, which usually signifies a similar pattern in the major indices. But that's actually not translated because there's a lot of recessionary fear inside the market as well. And we know that there's potential for two more wars on the agenda. So we must be prepared for that. And we can see that the risk has been just coming out of the market. This is the VIX or the fear gauge of the S&P 500. That's just been plummeting, but prices have been going down as well. So you can see other factors are disconnecting the relationships between the dollar and 
the markets. One good thing that we're seeing is inflation rates are coming down. We want to observe this. We've seen that yields have been collapsing down, but the problem is they've not been actually driving the markets up. The markets have been turning over. Traders are aware and prepared for any possible movement inside the markets. And we can see in six days time at the next FOMC meeting, the probability of a 75 basis point increase has been the lowest it's been for quite some time. Just to give you an idea, one week ago, the potential probability was 98.4%. It's 81.4% now. One thing that we must be very aware of to understand if this is just the start of a major sell down, if we take out the previous lows in the S&P 500, we would expect an enormous amount of pain to follow. Please be aware of that. But if we don't do that, if we actually form a higher low into an uptrend, we could see a significant improvement because the S&P 500 is nearly in the process of breaking over some key resistance levels. It's in fact still under long term resistance. You can see that with the EC method masterclass students. But when you look at price, we are in fact getting above one particular resistance level and have turned it to support already. If it holds is the key thing now. Before we were saying that this is a dollar story. Keep your eye on the DXY. It's no longer a dollar story. It is now an S&P 500 story. Remember rule 252 be prepared and don't be scared. When we look at Bitcoin and look into the Stanfield levels, the key to understand with Stanfield levels, these are formed from the CTKS method version 2, which I will be releasing into the masterclass as an LV series. The concept is this 2777 mark and the 2588 mark were very strong areas for sellers to re-enter the market and push price down. And it's exactly what happened. We don't have a lot of support underneath here. It's quite possible that we come down further and test lower levels of support, especially if the S&P 500 goes that way as well. Please keep your eye on the S&P 500 now, not really the DXY. The S&P 500 is far, far more important. And that's only at this current time. We would expect the markets to normalize at some stage. We have to be flexible in our approach. If we get a turnaround, the next sell level is 21714. And if we get a further collapse, we have four support levels 2208, 19986, 19641 and 19 423. If we fall through the 19423, the next one is 18662. We've been talking about this for a little bit of time. Yesterday, in yesterday's video, Bitcoin was about 20,600, and we were talking about this potential movement down to the 19,500 level, which is max pain for options expiration of $1.38 billion. And that's tomorrow. Please let me know in the comments, do you think we'll actually head down towards this level? Or do you think that we'll do something else? Please let me know in the comments. Let's have a look at the longs and the shorts. We can see the shorts were entering back into the market, but have decreased. The longs were entering back into the market and they have decreased as well. There's a lot of uncertainty at the moment, but we do know over the past couple of days, short liquidations have been the way. This means that a lot of shorts have been taken out of the market, exposing a lot of longs to potential liquidation. Let's check out those liquidations now. We can see in the past 24 hours, 109.68 million in total liquidations across 53,820 positions. And when we look at total liquidations across the past 24 hours, about 59% long. Past 12 hours, 68% long. Past 4 hours, about 92% long. And the past hour, about 91% long. And if we look at the overall chart, you can see just how disproportionately liquidated shorts were. That actually exposes the longs to liquidations. They need to be careful right now. We can see that the entire crypto total market cap, global market cap has been decreasing. 
And the greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, Clayton, USTC, Doge, Adam, Uni, and Bit. And the greatest losers, Ton, ETHW, Casper, APT, Quant, and Carver. In other news, Elon Musk now owns Twitter. And Twitter introduces tweet tiles for NFTs. This feature is compatible with four marketplaces, Rarible, Magic Eden, Dapper Labs, and Jump.Trade. Dogecoin price jumps 40% on Elon Musk, Twitter's crypto wallet rumors, Ethereum becoming more popular with institutions, Fidelity survey shows. And this comes from the news article, Fidelity says more institutional investors are holding crypto, respondents in Asia and Europe are more likely to own digital assets. Google Cloud announces blockchain node engine BNE to start on Ethereum. EU lawmaker calls Cardano a rocket as ADA eyes monster bull run. Solana-based protocol seeking to decentralize ride-sharing raises $9 million. Axelar partners with Polygon to deliver cross-chain communication to Polygon supernets. Blockchain.com partners with Visa to offer crypto debit card. Major credit card company Visa may be planning to explore digital wallet services based on two recent trademark applications. Kazakhstan to build central bank digital currency on BNB chain. Crypto whales scoop up over 35 million in Shiba Anu, SHIB, signaling buy season. Microsoft struggles to enter the metaverse. Problems plague development of its HoloLens augmented reality headset. They say, we had the opportunity to own this market. Oh no, we're so sorry, Microsoft. NFT vending machines to make digital art more accessible at London event. That's nft.london. And Visa has plans to launch its own cryptocurrency wallet. It's pretty obvious that crypto is here to stay. And what I've done here is just to go into the top cryptos, covering about two days and show you this on a percentage axis. You can see Ethereum was doing really well, but it's sold down somewhat. And we can note that Bitcoin's gravitational pull is very, very strong. That's that blue line in between. BNB had some good news, but it's still obeying Bitcoin's gravitational pull. ADA is also obeying Bitcoin's gravitational pull, but it's slightly weaker. XRP doing the same. This is why you must look at Bitcoin. And to look at Bitcoin, you must look at the stock market. This is what we do inside the masterclass. We look for deep connections inside markets. Solana is selling off, but in accordance with Bitcoin's gravity. And Doge, unfortunately, it's been hit by Bitcoin's gravity. And that's why we say no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. And always remember, strong become weak and weak become strong. We can see DOT just obeying Bitcoin's gravity, but has weakness. Matic obeying Bitcoin's gravity as well. You can see how Bitcoin plays out on all the top alts, but it plays out on all of them. Even SHIB had some good news recently, but we can see SHIB cannot escape Bitcoin's gravitational pull. I'm not going to cover these individually, but we're looking for inverters. We can see lunacy starting to invert on Bitcoin's gravity. When we look at the next eight cryptos, we don't see any real inversion in here. We know that 99% of cryptos will move in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity, but 1% will temporarily escape it. An escapee, an inverter is EOS, and we can see similar things from Theta. We can see that clay is starting to come down with Bitcoin's gravitational pull, but Nexo is starting to break away. It's starting to invert. We're seeing a slight inversion in MENA. It's just very slight. With the next day, they're all following Bitcoin's gravity to one degree or another. We can see a very small inversion occurring on MDX. And it's really interesting to look at Porto and Santos. They're fan tokens. They're getting whacked. What you will find with inverters, they can be inverters at one stage and then turn into sinks the next. <laughs> synchronized, synchronized cryptos. Just reminds me of Elon Musk. 
Uh, and what do I mean? Just off by the Street, you and I know them uh, well. Here's and, Elon Musk um, we'd walking reported into the Twitter the day, according to and sources saying, in an internal this memo sink in, reviewed get by Bloomberg, he's carrying that Musk a sink. is Street, He really wants that uh, sink well, to um, come in to the Twitter offices. The day, according to so the sink this is in. So we need to be aware that sometimes we get an inversion, but sometimes the inverters start to correlate. Naughty inverters. I'd like to thank all the very kind and generous community members who've reached out and bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. And Brett says, Hi Ken, thank you for creating the most positive community on YouTube. We all know how much you do for us in the daily videos and through the masterclass. Your energy and commitment knows no bounds. But you've also built a wonderful worldwide positive excellence family and we are all richer for it. Thanks so much, Brett. And thank you, Billy and JB and PH and Roche. Thank you, my friends. And also a big thank you to Dan sticking one behind the counter for you, kind sir. Ah, oh, thanks, Dan. After months of watching the daily videos, a lot of things are now starting to click. Life commitments are making progress through the masterclass somewhat slow, but my commitment has not wavered. You're awesome, Dan. Keep it up, my friend, and thank you for your kind words. Thank you to all the coffee supporters for your kind generosity. And if you go across to posts, you can see that I've put some videos in there just as my way of saying thank you. In markets like this, we need to be courageous. And that's what positive excellence is all about. Positive excellence, each of these words, is a component piece of the jigsaw puzzle of positive excellence. And I thought it would be great to talk about courage. How do you get it? How do you apply it? And what does it mean when you get it? I'm really looking forward to your thoughts and your views. And I'd like to thank everybody who commented on yesterday's video very much. Such very insightful things that we cover off each and every day inside the comments. And Al said, I learned to put aside a little more time to read all the comments below. Much respect to everyone. We have such an incredible global family. We know that the market controls the returns, but you control your trade or investment. And putting in your Borsog code each and every day is a form of active learning that the market will absolutely reward you for. And well done to everybody who said sharp angles reflect or reverse that they do. And especially well done to Sean. You even knew it was rule 19. What a legend. And thank you to Dan. I love using the word rolloping. It's such a crazy word. When I personally look at the crypto market like this, we can see so much red, but there's always green pockets. And we know price is always moving in a wave. The key is to get on the right side of the percentage. Doing your Borsog code each and every day prepares you. It stops zone one and zone two thinking, which is incredibly important because those zones are licenses to lose money. And that's why I do my absolute best to share insights gained from my 30 plus years in financial markets. When you start to see the jigsaw pieces, the jigsaw puzzle starting to come together, it's just incredibly awesome. But those jigsaw pieces can change character all the time. That is the tricky thing about markets. Please let me know if you learned something new today. I would love to hear what that was. And please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. And please don't be hard on yourself if something doesn't go your way. Just say to yourself, I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. That will keep you inside zone three and zone four. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.